Hey everybody, uh, welcome to my tutorial. Um, this is Mind's Eye, um, and welcome. Um, this is going to be a quick tutorial on Saxon Dottie's show presenter. Um, initially, here is our the website, um, saxondottie.co.uk, um, and initially you're going to go to your homepage, of course, and it'll bring you to this. This is a MP3G based hosting program for karaoke um, so initially you're going to go to your download uh, buy of course purchase it um, or if you wanted to use the trial version um, of course you know it tells you all your limitations it's only 15 day trial evaluation um, and of course the latest build is version 3.0 um, which was released in 2015 um, in February um, the version I have is the 2009 release um, because I'm running Windows 7, which the new build is for normally Windows 8, but it does, of course, use in the older uh, Windows builds. Um, mine works fine, so I really don't feel like updating it. Um, there is a couple of uh, differences in the versions, but um, for this tutorial, I'm running the 2009 version, and so that is what I'm going to be um, showing uh, the tutorial on. Now, there's not really that much of a difference from what I've seen. Um, there, of course, there are some improvements um, from the uh, 2009 version um, in comparison to the 15, of course, but um, I won't go into it um, for this tutorial just because that's not the one I'm presenting. Uh, initially, you're gonna need to download Winamp uh, the mp3g plugin and the pacemaker plugin along with it for in order for it to run it at its full capacity um, and of course it does uh, also show you that it, there is a um, non winamp based version of this which of course you can go to the website and um, uh, evaluate that uh, yourself um, or download that if that's something that you wish um, and now you don't necessarily need the pacemaker plugin, but if you want to do key change and multiplex support, you will need that, obviously. But you do need the MP3G plugin in order to read your MP3Gs um, that you have um, downloaded or are you wanting to use. Now, uh, once you uh, install the program onto your uh, your system. Um, make note of where you inst where it installs Winamp, um, where what folder you've put it into. Uh, normally, it will uh, for Windows Seven. Um, it will install it into your x86 program file uh, folder, um, you know, programs folder um, in Windows Seven, and then above and uh, anything X. I believe it's XP and above. Um, don't quote me on that. I'm pretty sure I know it's Windows 7 because that's where it installs it on mine. Uh, initially for XP, it installed it directly into your program files folder, but for the newer versions of Winamp or of Windows, I believe they uh, actually created um, the x86 folder. Um, so once you have it installed, uh, I'm going to open it up here. Um, as I said, I'm running. I'm excuse me. I'm running the 08 version, um, which is the previous version to the 2015, I believe. Um, I, don't need a, I don't need a UAC to bother me. Um, so again, once you install Winamp, you should be good to go. Um, um, you're going to have to tell it where Winamp is for uh, initially. Um, because West, again, especially on XP, it's not gonna, it's gonna initially um, think it's in just the regular programs file. So in order to do that, um, first initial setup, you it will not pull up WinApp if it can't find it. So we go into your options, um, and right off the bat, again, it's gonna ask, it's gonna ask for the WinApp path. Um, so you're initially gonna tell it where it is. It's going to pop up with your warning. Are you sure you want to change your Winamp path? And you're going to tell it yes. And again, for Windows 7 specifically, and probably above, if you're using this specific program and this release, uh, you're going to go to your Windows uh, program files under your C drive, which is the x86 folder. And then, of course, you're going to find your Winamp folder. 
and just click on it, hit OK, it'll and it'll initially find it. Once you do that, you're going to exit out completely of the program, close it out, and then restart it. And it should pull up WinApp alongside with it in order for you to use it. Um, now, initially, when you install it, make sure you install your MP3G plugin after you install WinApp. Um, and then, of course, your um, your uh, your uh, pacemaker plugin as well um, in that order. Um, so it's Winamp, your, all your plugins, and then install Saxon Dotty. Um, that way, you're not having any issues with the plugins, um, and they of course work. Um, now, in your general options, you've got um, some stuff that's already marked for you. Um, your double click on Q, your drag and drop, and your remove song. Um, and also you have your use interactive search. Now I myself don't like this function because it tends to slow my searches down. So I generally unclick your use interactive search. Um, if you have a fast enough computer and you want to use it, great. Um, for me, uh, when I tend to get backed up on people requesting songs, I tend to unclick it just because it slows me down. Because it, what it does is, as you're typing your search in your search bar, it will automatically start populating its results. I don't like that feature. Again, I think it slows down my computer a little bit too much, and so I usually tend to uncheck that. And that way, you can just type the full search word search that you're doing, and then hit search. So uh, here you have your different uh, color schemes that you can change to your auto de play delay and of course your default singer if you want, wish to change that and then your audio device for jingles. Um, now importing songs. Generally I suggest you keep all your songs in one folder. Um, if you want to organize that that's great. Um, it's a lot easier to um, do that if it's all in one folder that way it searches it all in one shot and you're not having to click around and tell it hey look here and import from here um, so um, with mine I already have mine set up but I will do a quick thing you uh, initially you're going to click on your tip double three dots tell it where your folder is I of course have a CDG folder so it's automatically going to pop the last thing I did. Um, and then you're going to tell it to get tracks. That's going to take you a few minutes depending on how many you have. Um, what it'll do is uh, if you have any kind of error or your ID3D tags on your MP3Gs or mismatched or have some kind of error where it's not reading it, it's going to pop up with a warning telling you, do you want to get warned every time that it finds a song? I would say no, that way it'll continue with search of all the folders for your mp3gs and then it'll, it, what it'll do is it'll load all of them here listed um, under the all these and then you're going to tell it to transfer to main and that way it'll dump it into your uh, search queue. Uh, you, you can also count your tracks how many you have so it gives you a total. Uh, you can open the folder containing your database and then of course you can clear your database if you ever need to. Once that's done you can just X out and then it should you should be able to search for whatever songs you have in your library. Um, export manager that's for exporting all your songs. Um, I generally haven't used this at all so I really can't tell you much about it other than that you can export your songs. Um, Audience screen. I have used this before. Um, you, you have either a button to initially use it or hide it. Um, reset it if you ever need to if there's any kind of error. Uh, your initial scrolling uh, message, you know, welcome to your show, uh, any kind of you know, messages you want scrolling um, while you're uh, on your CDG window. Um, and then of course you've got your, you can, it has the option of scrolling your next singer and it comes initially with a template so you could adjust that to however you need to and then of course save it. Uh, enable automatic display of next performer obviously it's gonna you know it's gonna go with your whatever's on your queue um, and of course you have those options there. Uh, you've got your top and bottom of where it's going to be scrolling 
and your scroller speed, font color, and all that good stuff. And of course, it's got a sample text there to tell you um, what it's going to look like. Uh, your jingles, of course, are for your any MP3s that you want to add on there for a little spice in your show. Um, you know, flare, whatever you want to do. I, I've got applauses on here for slow days, um, or you know, just to have that feeling of, of an audience. Uh, if you don't have one, um, you could do like the you know the little jingles here, or sound effects, and everything, just to add a little stuff. You've got your check for updates button, and of course your register button. Um, you know, when you when you initially purchase this program, um, they're going to send you an email, uh, I believe, on on for registering it, and uh, that takes a couple of days. So, you know, if you if you find you like this program, go ahead and uh, you know, I would obviously suggest purchasing after your 15 day trial. And uh, you know, it, it's a really stable program. I enjoy it a lot. I haven't had any issues with it. Um, I've only had it crash, and it initially wasn't the fault of the program. It was the computer's fault. And uh, the nice thing about it, even when it crashes, it keeps your queue of what uh, what you had inputted already. So you're not losing any you know any people that you have had queued up or any songs that you've queued up. Now, if you wish to um, import a file, um, say you downloaded an MP3G track and you want to add it to your queue but you don't want to necessarily add it to your um, to your library as of yet while you're running a show or anything like that you're going to click your FV button and you're going to find where you downloaded I'll just pull up a button um, just to show you uh, let's find one real quick um, no, no, no where did I have it? Oh, too far. There we go. We'll pull up a Jodeci song. Of course, this is the w uh, window that it's going to pull up. Now, um, this is what it will do um, if you have a MP3G zip file. Um, that will be uh, this is so that, that this is what it normally pulls it up as. Now, if you have a split file for some reason where it's not zipped and you have the CDG and the MP3 um, in the same folder, what you do is you would click on the MP3 uh, file instead of the CDG file because it won't read the MP3 G or the CDG file, excuse me. Um, and then it will pull up this window. Uh, the nice thing about that is if it's got an ID3 tag, it will read it and it will populate everything on here, uh, the artist and tile for you. Um, as long as it's correct. Uh, if it doesn't, or if you just initially click on the zip file, this is what it'll pull up. So of course you're going to type in the title of, or the artist and the title. Um, and then of course your singer who uh, requested it. I'm going to put my name in. And of course you double click it to get it going. And I, there you go. There you have it. Um, it'll start playing real quick. Um, there you go. So I'll uh, stop that. So um, <clears throat> you can have, there are options for you to change this window here um, uh, to have your own personal logo. Um, I believe also in the window that pops up, you can have that as well. Um, uh, changed, I believe, the background. Um, I believe so. You, uh, that might be other another program. Um, I've used other programs. I've used Late Shaws, um, and I've tried out a couple of other CDG pro or CD. Uh, so excuse me, uh, karaoke programs. This one I have initially found to be the best um, out there for my the purposes that I use it for personal and um, for um, you know parties and things like that um, that I've done. Um, you've got, of course, your standard buttons over here for play, stop, pause, and restart. Uh, left, right, speaker, center um, for your multi-tracks. Um, and then, of course, this is your tempo drop. Um, if you want to drop it or increase it, uh, this is your kamikaze karaoke button. Now, again, when you initially imported, you had that option to do that um, when you were in importing you could include it in your kamikaze that's what that button is for um, and that's for if you want to somebody wants to randomly do a suicide song or a karaoke kamikaze song that's what you would hit that for and it will randomly pull those up um, 
these buttons here are for, of course, your um, your audio jingles, MP3 jingles, um, in your options menu when you had uh, your jingles here. That's what those buttons are for. You know, one through one through sixteen. So you've got quite a bit there to mess around with. Um, these here are your, of course, uh, move the person up to the top, up, up one, delete somebody from your queue or the song from your queue, and of course the opposite of moving them down or up. This is a um, clear your entire queue. Um, this is for um, your scrollers. You're gonna you're up, up to the next performer scroller, and then of course clear the next scroller. Um, and then of course if you've got your history um, of your singers you can type in a search here of who you're uh, who you want to look for or if you're looking for a specific song and you don't know who that person sang or, or who have actually sung your songs type in the title and artist and it'll look that up for you and it'll list it who's actually sung those songs your no duplicates you can clear your history export and of course import and the, uh, that exports as a um, uh, a uh, Excel file. Uh, that way you can uh, you know, print that if you ever need to, or you know you can actually print it at specific persons if they were requested or anything like that. You can email that to somebody, um, or you can just export your entire um, history. That way you can have that saved in case anything happens to it, or, or if you want to you know export it and import it onto a different computer. That way you keep your history. Um, that is the initial um, setup there for um, Saxon Dottie Show Presenter. Um, this is the 2008 version. Uh, thank you for watching my tutorial. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and message me. Go ahead and hit the like button. Uh, subscribe if you want to watch my other videos. Uh, I'm an avid karaoke, uh, you know, enthusiast. I, I I love karaoke. I've done it for years. Um, I've used this program for years. Um, and I highly recommend it. Um, you know, and if you want to check out my other videos, I've got some karaoke videos that I'm going to be doing um, of myself and a couple friends. Um, and if you have any questions, just go ahead and shoot me an email or shoot me a message on uh, on YouTube. And uh, thanks, guys, for watching. I'll catch you later.